Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts for the South Division III sectional finals between the ninth seeded 15, five and three Ashland Clockers and the 11th seeded 15, six and two Hopkinton Hillers. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi on the call, John Ritz on camera for the all TBL sectional finals matchup. The winner of this game advances on to Saga Serena in the state semifinals Wednesday night. As I welcome in my broadcast partner, Eric Cardi. Eric, these two teams have seen each other twice this season and they split the series. And we know that both these teams have a whole lot of talent. It should be a great battle out there today. Yeah, <clears throat> what a way to have the rubber game come down to uh, for a divisional championship. Uh, you know, you say these two teams, they grew up playing with each other, play each other in the Tri-Valley, and to have it come to uh, this, you couldn't script it any better. And it's the first time for both of these teams reaching the sectional finals. And of course, it'll be the first time for one of these teams advancing on to the state semifinals. And both, <laughs> both hockey programs, as a puck uh, comes at us, have really just continued to develop over the last few years and uh, have become elite hockey programs in the state. Right now, we'll send it down to Rinkside for the introductions and the national anthem. I was almost gonna yell heads up, but I Pearson does, uh, he does a lot of that part now, the after game stuff. Yeah, after the game, yeah, he does all the, the after totals. Yeah. Oh, 
I'll, guys stood right back behind, no, behind no, their camera. I got to be able to see, man. You can stand up. Yeah. The last one is right here. I know, though. Yeah. The announcers were behind the camera. They're all here. for the opening face-off between the Hopkinton Illers and the Ashland Clockers in this South Division III sectional finals game. A great crowd on hand here this afternoon. Good representation from both schools. Should be a great atmosphere out there, Eric. Yeah, and what really impresses me, Tom, is uh, these teams defensively. Uh, Ashland's pitched two shutouts so far, and Hopkinton has not given up a total all the way through. And we are just about ready for the opening face-off. Let's recap the starters in net for Ashland. It's Jake Dempsey, Cole Thomas, the starter for the Hillers. And we are underway as the Hillers control off the opening face-off. Back to the Ashland zone we go. Put around the boards by Merrill and up to the near side. Now the Hillers with control in the Ashland zone. Taking a look at the Ashland starters, Brett Irwin the center, right wing Brian Gazzard. Defense, Jackson Hornung and Jack Merrill. And Jack De Dempsey in net. Matt Milko is the center for the Clockers. As for the Hillers, it's Sean Walsh, Kyle Rogers, your forwards. Tommy Hamblett, also a forward. And on defense, Steve Simos and Ron Sheamus. Back to the Hillers end we go. Sheamus tracks it down. Up along the far side, Nick Fish. Jammed up along the boards. Turned up ice by Irwin. Hornung gets it over to Merrill. And now Sean Walsh trying to take control. Tracked down by Gilbert. That's up to Quinlan. Quinlan puts it over to the near side corner. And now jammed up behind the Ashland net. Jake Weinstock taking a hard body check there. Over to the corner we go. Weinstock trying to get it out of the jam. Merrill gets the stick in there, and it's up towards Boselli. Here comes Boselli. Boselli and Nick Fish trying to dig it out. Nick Fish had a couple of big goals in the last game for Ashland as they took down Bourne. Bourneung up along the near side. There's a shot, and that's a little bit wide there by Fish. Merrill trying to dig it out. Gilbert's there. Ashland trying to establish some control. Weinstock gets in there. Up the far side. Weinstock took a big hit. And it's turned back up ice. Into the Hillers zone. Clockers make a change. And there is some hard contact towards the neutral zone. Here comes Matt Milko. Milko meets up with Glyden. Up behind the Hillers net. Over to the far side, Merrill. And just about a packed house here uh, today, Eric, as expected. And the Ashland fans are in their Hawaiian shirts today. Yeah, <clears throat> a couple of big hits early on, too. Ashland trying to set the tone with the body. 
Back to the neutral zone. Sheamus going to track it down. Nearly intercepted there, but the Hillers have a break here. Here comes Walsh. Walsh racing in and puts that off the side of the net. It's now jammed up there, and that'll draw the whistle. That was uh, Rogers trying to dig it out of there. Yeah, I think the key to the start of the game here, Tom, is uh, composure. You know, this is the biggest game of both these teams' lives, and this will make sure they don't get too amped up. Certainly do. We'll have a face-off in the Ashland zone. Over to the corner we go. Hamlet trying to dig it out of there. Now it's up behind the net. Hornung with the pass over to the far side. Gazzard with possession. There's a shot wide to the left. Tracked down by Hornung. Hornung and racing up to the Hillers zone. Takes a big hit along the boards. That was a nice uh, hit but delivered by Sheamus on Hornung. That was a great check. Took him right out of the play. Simos. Pops it off the glass. Warren gets the touch on it, then meets up with Sean Walsh. Well, you know, the star on Ashland all season and the star on the TVL has been Jackson Hornung, tremendous multi-sport athlete. Leads in most offensive statistics. Yeah, Hopkins is definitely gonna have to keep an eye on him. Behind the Hillers net now. Shot from the far side deflected off of Walsh. And that's turned back up ice. Jackson Hornung, 25 points overall on the season, 17 goals, eight assists. And then actually it's Brian Gazzard, the point leader for Ashland with 19 goals and 16 assists. So Brian Gazzard has come on very strong in the later season games and the postseason. Along the near side, Fish. Miller's put it back into Ashland territory. About five minutes through the first period and some back and forth action and Eric, I'm expecting more of a defensive game than we've seen uh, over the past couple of games in this postseason. Yeah, yeah. despite Ashland having a little bit better uh, zone time in Hopkins end, they really haven't got, I don't think they have a shot on yet. And everything's staying to the outside, so defense is definitely the key tonight. The Hillers 3-0 in the playoffs as well as Ashland, but the Hillers have pitched shutouts in all postseason games so far. They've outscored their opponents 14 to nothing total. And now, in front of the Ashland net. Quinlan was trying to break away with it as Horning turns it up. Gilbert going to try to track it down. Ashland has outscored their opponents 15 to 4 overall in the postseason. Weinstock tracks it down. Over to the corner. Quinlan trying to race behind the net and it's intercepted by Gazzard. Here comes Gazzard on a break. Gazzard turns it up towards Milko. Milko looking for a shot, a misfire there. And Gilbert gets the stick in. Quinlan is going to take a hit into the boards. And now it's tracked down by Hornung. Hornung trying to get the pass over and he's able to skate away from Walsh. And that is flipped up into the Ashland zone and we'll have a whistle. I think the key here, Tom, is for Hopkins just to be patient. I mean, they. Know that the speed that they have, they just got to wait for the right time in order to utilize that. Get an on man break. And off the icing, face off in the Hiller zone. Hiller's the away team today with the 11 seed, Ashland the home team, but Hiller's been in the uh, away team all postseason long. It's been upset after upset for the Hillers, and Ashland with a couple of nice upsets as well. And we'll recap the playoff run very shortly. Up the far side we go. Hiller's looking for a break here. And that is Rogers trying to maneuver around Hornung. He'll meet up in the corner. Puck loose in the corner. A shot there by Hamlet just wide to the right. And then Hamlet meets up with Boselli. Good action here in this first period. There's a shot. And that was off the stick of Sheamus deflected by Jack Reap. Hiller's trying to put some pressure on. Along the corner. Walsh with a shot just wide to the right. Walsh trying to leave it for Rogers. 
There's Walsh. Broken stick there. That was a clocker with the broken stick. He gets the push on Walsh, and Rogers nearly jams it in. Now a shot here. This Simos. wide to the left by Simos. And we got a tight squeeze up here in the media section, so Eric will be helping me uh, when the puck gets in the near side corner. And there's a shot turned away by Gilbert off the stick of Boselli. Another shot there, turned away by Thomas. Some good action here in the last couple minutes. Both teams starting to establish pressure. Here's Hornan, intercepted by Hamblet. Now Dan Kirk trying to get in there. Sheamus with possession. Sheamus gets it over to the far side. We're just under eight minutes left to go in the first period. We are scoreless here in the Division Three South sectional finals between the Hillers and Ashland. The pass over by Sibadi to the far side. That puck flipped up in the air, and Luke Glyden will get to it. We'll have a whistle. Uh, the big line for Hopkins and getting it done there, Tom. They uh, really put the pressure on. They just always know where each other's going to be. Circle the net. Tommy Hamlet with a great opportunity. Left the alone out front. Sean Walsh had a chance, and, and uh, Simos had a chance, too, coming down from the point. Walsh and Rogers have just been extraordinary together out there, and they just seem no to know how to set each other up. And of course, uh, Tommy Hamblett with a handful of assists in the last game. I believe it was three assists. He was just tremendous. Set up Rodgers for one of the beauty goals against Coyle Cassidy out in front now. Quinlan nearly had a shot, but Brett Irwin was able to box him out. Luke Leiden tracks it down. Off the stick of Quinlan, out of play it goes. We'll have a faceoff. 7.19 left to go in the first period. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi on the call, John Ritz on camera for the South Division III sectional final. And the game before us, it was Canton taking down Westwood in the South Division II sectional finals. 8-0 was the final score on that game. And that Canton Bulldogs team, there's something else. It's a very dominant team this year. Luke Leiden with the pass over the far side. Here comes Weinstock racing in. Weinstock looking for a shot just wide to the left. Up along the near side it goes. Glyden with the backhanded pass. No one's there and it's intercepted by Merrill. And now here comes Ashland. Merrill with a shot and that is a glove save by Thomas. Well, the Hillers definitely getting their chances now, Tom. They're uh, starting to see that speed being utilized there. Getting those outlet passes from the defense. Jack Merrill has been uh, terrific for Ashland as of late. Five goals, 11 assists overall for the senior. Jack Merrill, kind of a similar player to Simos, uh, technically a defenseman, but gets a whole lot of shots on net. Rogers with the flip up. And that was intercepted as he was looking for a Hamlet. Now Horning with a shot, and that's turned away off of the Federico's. goes. I believe it was Simos who got a touch on it. Jammed up along the far side now. Looking for a shot here. With possession, Fish puts it back to Horning at the point, and that is turned away by Thomas. Hamlet flips it off the glass. Back to the Ashland zone we go. Here comes Sean Walsh, but we're going to have the icing. Now well, the pace is definitely at a 10 so far from the drop of the puck. Certainly is. Both of these teams, they seem ready to play today. They're bringing the intensity, and this has been a good, tough physical hockey game so far. Yeah, as I said earlier, it's just the key is just keeping those emotions in check. You want to have the good energy, but you want to expend it the right way. Walsh up against Sterwin on the faceoff. Simos around the net. Hornan, shot there, and that's turned away by Thomas. And now a breakaway attempt here. Here comes Hamlet. Hamlet trying to get to it, but boxing moat was Merrill, jammed up along the corner now. Up behind the Ashland net, Hornung flips it over to the corner. Hornung with the pass up ice, and that'll draw the whistle. Yeah, we've seen several uh, almost breaks here for the Hillers now. They get that speed. They're getting in behind the Ashland defense. Just haven't got a good clear-cut shot out of it. Face off along the near side in the Ashland zone. Sean Walsh up against Brett Irwin. Hamlet with the pass into the corner. And now Rogers there to intercept, trying to jam it in, and it's turned away. Brian Gazard was able to get the stick in there. Back to the blue line now, Simos trying to get to it as he's matched up with Milko. 
Here comes Simos racing up the far side. Great shot there and a glove save by Dempsey. Did you see the spin on that one, Eric? Yeah, yeah, the Steve Simos, you know, he's been a natural defenseman his whole life and the, uh, the move to put him back there for the playoffs and tighten up the defense is, uh, hasn't really hurt the offense at all for him. I'd say overall it's paid off. I think it's made this already great Hiller's defense even stronger. Here comes Boselli. Pass up the far side, around the net it goes. Thomas will set it up. Trying to get it over to Quinlan along the near side boards. And the, as that was knocked out of play. In the sectional semifinals game, you had three Hillers score two goals. Will Quinlan, Kyle Rogers, and Sean Walsh. 5-11 left to go in the first period. To get to this point, the Hillers defeated six-seeded Bishop Stang, four to nothing, third-seeded North Quincy, three to nothing, tenth-seeded Coyle Cassidy, seven to nothing. For Ashland, they took down eight-seeded Martha's Vineyard, four to nothing, first-seeded Hanover, two to nothing, and fourth-seeded Bourne, four to three. So both teams have just played tremendous hockey and taken down some great opponents in this sectional bracket. Just past the reach of Quinlan, Hornung. Flips it off the stick of Quinlan, and now it's tracked down by Saperoshitz. Saperoshitz puts it to, to the far side, an opportunity here. Dan Kirk trying to chase it down. Kirk over to the near side corner. Horning able to steal it away. Horning just misses his intended target, Gazard. Gazard with the pass over to Milko. Milko top of the circle. Thomas turns it away. Up behind the net now, trying to set up a shot in the high slot. Nicely done by the Hillers defenders. And yeah, Rogers got a stick on that just at the last second. Here comes Sean Walsh. Walsh, top of the circle, a little miscue there. Hornung was able to get a stick in there. And Walsh takes a hard hit into the far side boards. Hamlet with a, that was Seamus with a little bit of a misfire. Now that shot turned away off the stick of Rogers. Jammed up along the near side. Hamblett trying to rip it out. Hamblett sets it up at the blue line. That shot off the stick of Sheamus turned away. And now here comes Gazzard. And it's wrapped up by Thomas. 3.32 left to go in the first period. We are scoreless between the Hillers and Ashland. And Steve, when I watch these two teams, it's like they're looking at each other in the mirror. I mean, just such similar styles of play. Yep, yeah, they both have uh, great defense and they both have uh, great offense. And uh, so far it's a, uh, you know, another push. Dan Kirk up against Jack Reap. I think if uh, there was Vegas odds on this game, it'd be very tough to pick a favorite. <laughs> well, I figured coming into this was either <laughs> gonna be one way, it was gonna be low scoring or high scoring. Along the far side now, chasing it down, Mallet. With how strong both defenses have been, and I was expecting a 3-2, 4-3 kind of game. Neck and neck the whole way, because I don't think any of these defenses are going to give up a whole lot of goals. Blyden jammed up with Fish along the near side corner. Around to the far side it goes. Weinstock takes a hard hit there. Good push away by Mallet. Now jammed up, and over to the near side it goes. Back down into the Hiller's zone, and that'll draw the whistle. 2.45 left to go in the first period. Both teams gonna switch up the talent on the ice. Love a face-off in the Ashland zone off the icing. Well, the Hillers usually have some pretty good set offensive plays here, so we'll see the key to winning the face-off here in the offensive zone. Out in front of the net, backhander turned away off the stick of Rogers. Simos now. There's a shot and it, Hornung is able to get the stick on it. And now here comes Gazzard. Gazzard with a break up the far side, looking for a shot here, that's turned away into the slot. Nice defense there by the Hillers. Well, Hopkins is doing a nice job, I'd say, of protecting that lower slot area, Eric. Yeah, both teams are keeping the offense to the outside. It's gonna be shoot and go for the rebound this game. Here's Milko. Milko misses Gazzard. Sheamus tracks it down. The far side we come. Now Ashland able to maintain possession. 
Two minutes and counting left in the first period. We will remain scoreless in the South Division Three sectional finals. Between the Crosstown arrivals, the Ashland Clockers and the Hopkinton Hillers. Here comes Simos with some smooth moves. Simos racing up the ice. Little push there, sets it up into the slot. Walsh trying to poke it in, it's turned away. Simos puts it off the boards. Now Hornung with possession. What'd you think about that attempt at a setup? Yeah, once again, Ashland did a good job, at least keeping them wide. They're gonna have to look for that, either get that pass to the trailer or shoot the puck and then have them crash the net to get the rebounds. Here comes the Hillers again, trying to put some pressure on. That was Saparoshitz and he'll leave it over for Kirk. A little misfire there. And that'll draw the icing. Yeah, that's one thing is Hopkins forced them to do is about Ashland's fourth or fifth icing here. And sooner or later, it's gonna burn you with the offensive faceoffs down on your end. I'll tell you what though, looking at some of these Clockers players, they seem a little gassed. Yeah, yeah Hopkins speed, they're definitely uh, making them work to get to the outside, even though they're doing a good job at keeping Hopkins from getting inside. Dan Kirk up against Jack Reap. Saparoshitz, and it's just past his reach. Quickly up the far side, Boselli. Pokes it off the boards. Getting in there now, Nick Fish. Jammed up along the boards. Minute left in the first. This game has had non-stop action the whole way through. Along the far side boards, Weinstock was trying to race in there, but Boselli cut him off. Hornung looking for a shot, out in front of the net, and it's turned away. That was just past the reach of Quinlan, Hornung with possession. Hornung jammed up along the near side, and now Nick Fish gets a stick on it, but no one there for Ashland. Pass up by Gilbert, and he'll wrap it around the boards. 25 seconds and counting left to go, the Hillers switching up a pair on the ice. Along the near side, and now racing out is Milko. Stolen away by oh. Rogers, and he was trying to set up Hamlet. And there's nice another shot, shot by and Simos. Steve Simos makes it one to nothing. 13 seconds left in the first period. That's a huge goal, especially here at the last under 20 seconds ago. Great play, though, down low by the forwards, and then getting that puck back to Simos. And Simos didn't have a goal in the seven goal performance in the semifinals, but he has a huge one here. He had a whole lot of assists throughout the postseason. Along the far side. one nothing Hillers, five seconds left in the first period. That one was nearly tapped in. And that was almost off of the stick of Gazzard. And that'll do it for the first period. A great start for the Hillers, Eric. Yeah, great game, great action up and down, uh, penalty free. Uh, the Hill is starting to feel it now. They started to dominate the second half after Ashland having the, uh, the better hand in the first few minutes of the game. Well, we have a long way to go, but it's a good one. Here at John Gallo Arena in Bourne, it's the Hopkinton Hillers leading the Ashland Clockers in this South Division Three sectional finals. One to nothing, second period up next on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Welcome back to the John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts, as we are ready for the second period of this South Division III sectional finals matchup in all TVL sectional final. The Hopkinton Hillers and the Ashland Clockers. Right now, it's the Hillers leading Ashland one to nothing as we head into the second period. It was Steve Simos with 13 seconds left, putting in the only goal of the game 
And Eric, I'd say the Hillers pressure in that towards the end of that first period especially was just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, the big guns really stepped up. They uh, started making some great plays down low, had some great chances early on, and they finally uh, broke through there right in the last seconds of the period. And we are ready to get the action underway in this second period. Sean Walsh up against Brett Irwin, and we're underway. Flipped up the ice by Hamlet. Around the boards it goes. Warning would stick on it. Now backhander by Quinlan. Gazzard with possession. Good stick work there, but turned away by Walsh. Over the corner it goes. Sheamus tracks it down. Jams up along the corner. And now that's flipped out of play off the side netting. We'll have another face off. Fourteen twenty-seven left to go in the second period. Just underway here in the second frame of the sectional finals. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi on the call. John Ritz on camera. Here comes Simos. Around the net he goes. Gets it over to Rogers who pokes it up to Walsh. Walsh on a break to the net. Out in front was trying to set up Hamlet. Turn away. That's a great play from end to end there for the Hillers. Sheamus with a shot there, and that's out in front of the net, and we have another goal! 2-0 Hillers. I think it was Hamlet. I believe it was, yeah, it was either Walsh or Hamlet. Yeah, it was Hamlet, I believe. But just the Hillers there, that Great play from their own, winning the faceoff in their own end. A great breakout. Simon's up the boards and ended up a two on one. We'll get the confirmation on that goal, but it's 2 0 Hillers. 14 10 left to go in the second period. I believe Hamlet had the assist and Walsh had the goal, but we'll confirm. And the PA announcer. Confirming that it was Hamlet with the goal and Rogers and Sheamus on the assist. So we'll go with that for now. Of course, we don't have the best view here at this uh, Gallo Arena due to the tight squeeze today in the media area. And that's turned up ice by Glyden. Hornan flips it up over to Fish. Well, Ashland, they have some work to do if they want to get back in this game, Eric. Yeah, Hill is uh, really coming out strong the way they finished the last period. Biden pokes that off the far side boards. And I'd say, I mean, the Hillers, they played good hockey all throughout the season, but I'd say they really had a turning point in the Cape tournament heading into the postseason. They just got white hot. Yeah, and getting Tommy Hamlet back from his illness, too, that was a real big help on the offense. Certainly was. Along the boards it goes, Gilbert with possession. Flips it up over to Quinlan. Now to Walsh. Walsh with a potential breakaway opportunity. There's a shot. And that is wrapped up by the goalkeeper, Jack Dempsey. Well, right now, the Hill is making it look easy on the breakout, Tom. Just uh, sending that puck up the boards and hitting the Hill is in stride with their speed. 12.55 left to go in the second period. Yeah, the speed for the Hillers is certainly getting to Ashland a little bit, I'd say. Sheamus, wide to the right. Dempsey came a little bit out of the net there. Walsh. Tracks down, trying to set it up in the slot. Backhander, turn away. That was off the stick of Rogers. Now Hamlet with a shot, and that's turned away. Here comes Ashland. Pass over by Milko. And now with a move there is Gazzer, jammed up along the corner, out in front. Simos deflects it away, and now it's still out in front of the net and turned away. Nice job by the Hillers surrounding that lower slot area and getting it away. Yeah, the Hillers really socked in in front there, making sure they had a barrier around that uh, crease area. Of a face off. The Hiller zone off the icing. Sean Walsh Hamlet coming off for a breather. Dan Kirk will be on the face off up against Brian Gazzard. Pass over, and now there's a shot, and that is saved by Thomas as he wraps it up. Thomas able to see that one all the way in. Cole Thomas has just been tremendous in the postseason. 
or so far have outscored their opponents 16 to nothing. Dan Kirk up against Alex Amalfi. Shot opportunity here, Hornung. And he tries to put that through, that's off of Thomas. Sheamus trying to turn it away. Gets it over to the near side, Weinstock. And back out in front it goes. Here comes Simos. Simos racing up the ice. Along the far side, there's a shot and a goal! Steve Simos with his second goal of the day. Three nothing Hillers. The goal comes with 11.55 left to go in the period. Just end to end for Simos there. He took that puck and utilized his speed and his great stick handling skills. He'll make his way around the outside and snap off a great shot. What a smash that was. Well, the winner of this game advances to the state semifinals. Looks like Ashland's going to take a timeout here now, try to rally the troops. Ashland takes a timeout. The Hillers up three to nothing. Let's recap the scoring so far in this game. 13 seconds left in the first period. It was Steve Simos with a nice goal. And then 14-10 uh, left to go in this second period. You had Tommy Hamlet assisted by Rogers and Sheamus. And then 11.55 left to go. Steve Simos with a beauty of a shot to give the Hillers a nice, comfortable 3 to nothing lead. Well, this is one of those games you were coming into it not knowing what to expect, but the Hillers, I mean, they are just playing tremendous hockey right yeah, now. Yeah, like I said, Tom, coming in, I was going both ways. You know, both teams pitch a lot of shutouts, and I was thinking it was either going to be a 1-0 you know, game or it was going to be a lot of goal scoring. <laughs> And both teams have ha had to uh, overcome some very tough competition to get to this point. And they have done what many didn't think was probable to get here to this South Division III sectional finals game. And right now the Hillers are leading three to nothing. Sean Walsh on the face off against Brandon Millett. On the near side we go as Gazard wraps it around. Wilco gets a stick on it. Ashley looking for a shot here. They know that they have to get something going. They want any chance in this game. Over to the near side as Hamlet meets up with Merrill. Saparoshitz trying to get it out of a jam. Now to the corner, tracked down by Gilbert. And back to the Ashland zone it goes. That'll draw the whistle. Uh, Gilbert with a great defensive play there, the first one. So the winner of this game will play Wednesday. And I believe they had the Saga Serena up there, but now it looks like uh, they might change the location, so we'll keep you updated. But certainly a long way to go in this one still, as that is popped out of play off the top of the net off the stick of Merrill. Yeah, Cole's just having a great time seeing the puck. He's had total vision on these shots, so the Hillers can keep it that way. He'll stop them all night. Well, the face off in the near side circle. Walsh up against Gazard. That'll switch it up, it'll be Hamlet. Over to the corner, Simos wraps it around over to Rogers. Rogers able to get it up to Walsh. Potential breakaway opportunity here. Here comes Walsh racing in, leaves it out in front, and it's in! Walsh with the setup, and the Hillers make it four to nothing. I think it was Rogers with the tip. Walsh and Rogers, but a it, deadly combination coming up ice. But just again, Tom, the Hillers are just killing it on the faceoffs. They want another defensive faceoff. Had another great breakout and ended up with another two-on-one. They're just killing Ashland with their breakouts, trolling the play. Four and nothing, Hopkinton. And things are uh, quickly getting tough for the Ashland Clockers as the Hillers, they are just dominating this period. Over to Simos. Up 
far side it goes. Samos tracks it down. Over to Weinstock. Into the neutral zone. Quinlan was trying to get in there and rip it away. And Kirk able to knock it up the ice. It's the first sectional finals game for both of these teams in their hockey program history. As we'll get an icing here. 10.25 left to go in this second period. The Hillers have already netted three more goals in the frame. A 4-0 lead. Sean Walsh on the faceoff for Hopkinton. Up against Gazzard. The Hill is just continuing dominating the faceoffs, both offensively and defensively. That one wrapped up by Dempsey. Walsh pokes it over to the corner off the faceoff. Milko with possession. Blyden was trying to get in there. Quinlan, or Walsh, turns it back up ice. And now here comes Ashton on a potential break. Warnung trying to skate by, but Walsh says, nope. Back to the neutral zone. Gazzard pass up. And he takes a big hit. Tommy Hamlet. Tracked down by Glyden. Glyden wraps it around over towards Rogers. And Gilbert was trying to skate away with it. Warnung trying to turn it around. And Milko's denied us. He was trying to get it in front of the net. But Tommy Hamlet with a great back check there. And we'll have an icing with 9.40 left to go in the second period. The okay, Ashland is definitely going to have to look to do something different here, Tom. The, the Hillers are just continuing to make that play in their own end off the boards and able to get clean breakouts. That one they had a little bit of trouble with, but they've had several of them just skating with untouched coming out of their zone. This game looking a lot like the first meeting these two teams had this season which the Hillers pretty much dominated in all facets. Came away with the 5-2 victory. That shot turned away by Thomas. Simos then pokes it to the far side. Hornung trying to get around Quinlan. Simos is there. He'll flip it off of Hornung. And Quinlan gets to it. He was looking for Weinstock coming up the near side. And that is just past the reach of Boselli. Now it's Boselli and Sheamus in the corner. Boselli sets it up, trying to set it up out in front. Horning with a shot, turned away by Thomas. And Hamlet, will, or Sheamus, slaps it to the near side. Here comes Sheamus. Just past the reach of Weinstock. That was a good save there by Cole Thomas. Yeah, Thomas again, he's, he's uh, getting to see them. Even though there's a little bit of traffic, he's still getting a clear vision, and he's just making some great saves, seeing that puck all the way in. And Horning had Reap in front of him, trying to uh, block the view of Thomas. But it did not work there. It'll be Walsh up against Gazzard. There's a shot turned away. Rogers was trying to get it up to Hamlet. Up behind the net now, Saparoshitz. That shot is wide to the left off the stick of Gazzard. Over to Walsh. Walsh trying to maneuver around the defender. Now poked up the ice by Gilbert. Gilbert puts it over to the far side. And now here comes Amalfi. Or excuse me, Hornung. Hornung is turned away by Saparosha. It's a nice steal there. Great poke check. Walsh flips it up into the Ashland zone. Here comes Hamlet, looking for a shot, and it's wrapped up by Dempsey. Eight fourteen left to go in the second period. The Hillers came out firing at all cylinders in this period and knocked three goals in within the first four minutes of action. Things have slowed down a little bit, but the Hillers still continuing to put the pressure on and defend their zone well. Along the far side now. Here comes Sheamus to try to turn it up the ice. Sheamus pass across over to Simos. Now back across the Weinstock. Now Dan Kirk is trying to race down the slot, but he was turned away. And Mailet was able to cut him off. 
Up the far side. Here comes Ashlyn. That goes to wide left of the net. Jammed up along the corner. Simos with the pass up over towards Kirk. Back and forth in the neutral zone. A smart play there, keeping possession of the puck back to Simos. Simos trying to turn it up ice. Simos met up with Gazzard. There's a shot. That was by Reap. Yeah, I think he was just trying to put it around there. Yeah, they're going to be offside on the play. They had to go clear. Weinstock takes a hit by Gazzard. Now here comes Dan Kirk. Kirk is tripped up by Irwin. Racing up, Milko. Milko. And that'll go out of play. 6.55 left to go in the second period. The Hillers leading Ashland 4 to nothing in this South Division III sectional final. Yeah, give Ashland credit, too. They're not, uh, they're not giving in. They're still trying to mount the attack here. They're certainly not. But both of these teams, I feel, no matter what happened, would uh, continue to play. Right to the end. Yeah. Hard, yep. Wrapped around by Gilbert over to Rogers. Rogers with the pass over to Walsh. Here comes Walsh looking for a shot. Into the circle he goes, and he's tripped up and will hook it around the boards. And do we have a penalty here, perhaps, for yep. tripping? I think he's we going. do. And again, that play, Tom, all started. Hopkins and winning a key faceoff. They have that set play where they send it around the other side of the boards. And another 2 1 1 they had out of that. Generate the penalty off of that. Jack Merrill heads to the box for two minutes. And the Hillers have the man advantage. 6.41 left to go in the period. Big opportunity here for Hopkinton. Walsh up against Gazzard. Simos. Pass to his left. Over to Gilbert and out of the corner. Gilbert. Flips it up just past the reach of Walsh. Hamlet jammed up along the far side corner. Simos trying to set up Walsh, and it was just a little wide there. With the heel of the stick. Yeah, a bit of a misfire. Hamlet. He was trying to set it up in the slot for Rodgers, and it ends up getting through Rodgers and being wrapped up by Dempsey. They yeah, almost caught him off guard there. Good defensive play by Ashton, lifting the stick up, and the ended up being right on net. The good pressure from the Hillers continues. Over to the corner. Wrapped around by Millett. Put down by Gilbert. Walsh with the pass over. Simos with a shot glove save, Dempsey. Simos has had uh, some powerful shots in this game today. He's been an offensive threat from the blue line. Walsh wins the faceoff once again. Gilbert going to wrap it around. Simos pokes it up to Rogers, who then takes a hit. Gambling along the corner. Back to Simos. Now across to Gilbert. Looking for a shot there. It was turned away. Walsh able to turn it back towards Rogers. Now along the near side corner. Simos along the blue line. That shot turned away off of the skate of Gazzard. Walsh across to Gilbert. Gilbert with a shot. And Hamlet trying to dig it out. Now Gilbert again with another shot there. I believe that went off the post. Rogers. And there's a shot wrapped up by Dempsey. A strong power play here for the Hillers. They controlled it pretty much the whole time in Ashland's end. 31 seconds left on the man advantage for the Hillers. 5-11 left in the period. Sheamus. Over to the corner to Kirk. Weinstock back to Sheamus. Trying to set up Saperoshitz with the one-timer. And it's popped out of play along the far side. 13 seconds left on the power play remaining. Great pressure by the Hillers. 
And Eric, I think uh, Ashland, they must be tired at this point as they have just been constantly playing catch up. Yeah, and they've been uh, having to hustle back as the Hillers have caught them on a couple of several odd man breaks. Up the ice we go. And Thomas will turn it away. Seamus with possession now. Leaves it for Quinlan. And the power play has expired. And we'll have an icing here. A little miscommunication there. 4.39 left to go in the second period. Hiller's up 4-0, but both of these teams can score fast and furious. Certainly got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. And the Hillers have done that all postseason long, so I don't expect any different here. Walsh up against Jack Reap. Gazzard with a little push to the blue line. Now it's back to Gazzard along the near side. Walsh trying to steal it away. Merrill is denied. Good block by Hamlet. That was a great block. Now out in front. That was wide to the right. And then Horning puts it off the side of the net. And now a little kick by Gazzard to try to get it back out in front. Simos with control. We'll push it up to Hamlet. And now the pass across over to Walsh. Or Seamus, rather. Seamus wraps it around. Checked down along the near side by Merrill. Back towards Simos. And he pushes that wide to the left. Less than four minutes left to go in the period. Seamus wraps it around the end boards. Rogers trying to get there for Hopkinton. And it'll go back to the Hiller's zone, and that'll draw the icing. 3.45 left to go as we get ready for another faceoff. I think that's going to be close to double digits in icing for Ashland so far in this game, and it's cost them a couple times. The Hillers, as you mentioned, Eric, have dominated on the faceoff. Kirk leaves it behind for Gilbert. We'll wrap it around. Kirk and Quinlan trying to get there. There's Quinlan. Quinlan was tied up with Merrill. Gilbert. Back and forth we go in the Ashland zone. Now Clocker is hoping for a break here as Boselli pokes it up the far side. Biden trying to track it down. He's tied up with Milko. And now Dan Kirk. Good help there by Kirk coming back. Kirk able to get it up the near side. And behind the net it goes. Quinlan. Quinlan was briefly tied up. And then a shot there turned away. Nice backhander. And then Gilbert's attempt is turned away by a clocker. That was uh, Dan Kirk with that backhander trying to sneak it in. Another racing here. Well, Ashland, they're having a tough time at this point establishing any kind of control, Eric. Yeah, yeah right now for them, Ashland, the key for them is just uh, you know, trying to get the puck in deep and take a one goal at a time, try to get some breaks. But the way the hill is a play, and that's going to be a tall task. It certainly is. I don't think there's any doubt the Hiller is playing the best hockey that they've played all season long at this point, and it's the most crucial point. Kirk. Rogers wraps it around towards Hamlet. Hamlet takes a shot. Picked up by Gazzard. Here comes Ashland. There's a shot wide to the right off the stick of fish. Up the near side. Just past the reach of Hamlet. Now Seamus. Seamus trying to turn it around. And Seamus, I think, burning a little time there. And that was some smooth moves, but now we'll have an icing. Yeah, I'm surprised too that Ashley has not done a little more pinching of the defense now, being down 4 0. They're going to try to keep that puck in the hockey and in at all costs now. The Franklin Panthers and Duxbury just arriving. They're playing in the South Division I sectional finals after this game is through. Walsh up against Reed. Reed pokes it back towards Merrill. Rogers to slap up the ice. Over to the corner, approaching two minutes left to go in the second period. All Hillers so far, up four to nothing. Here comes Gazzard. He meets up with Seamus. Now along the corner. 
And some good back and forth action here along the near side corner. Now across Hornung. Hornung looking for a shot. Good move around Simon. So that shot is just put out of play by Fish. A little too much mustard on it. Yeah, I don't think he realized too they had a 2 on 0 in front. He had his partner wide open for the pass, but it's turned and shot. I'd say that was probably the best opportunity of the night for Ashland. Of course, a whole lot of hockey left to be played, and we've seen both of these teams overcome deficits this season, so you can't yeah. count anybody this, out. This is a key spread for the Hillers here. you got a minute 43. You don't want to give Ashland any momentum going into the third period. You want to do everything they can to keep them off the scoreboard here. Dan Kirk up against Reed. The pressure's definitely starting to pick up a little bit from the clockers. Hornung, Saparoshitz now. And a nice job there by Saparoshitz, getting it over the far side. Now here comes Ashland, quick break here. And Gilbert gets in front of Hornung. That shot is going to be turned away off the skate of Saparoshitz. Now over the near side corner it goes. Kirk is able to get it up the boards towards Weinstock and back to the neutral zone. Kirk's been doing a real good job helping out in front play in defense. Picking up his man. Tracked down by Saparoshitz. He'll wrap it around. Weinstock gets the stick on it. And it'll float back to the Ashland zone and draw the whistle. Less than a minute left to go. Yeah, I think there's two or three opportunities now. With, correct with uh, some real good back checking coming back in the slot, making sure that Ashland doesn't have everybody free to get any rebounds. Of a face-off along the near side circle. Sean Walsh up against Irwin. Simon along the near side takes a shot. Horna. And that one turned away off of Sheamus. Taking one for the team there. Here comes Rogers. Rogers with a break. Over to the circle. There's a shot. Off the post. Still a live puck. Sheamus. And that is wrapped up by Dempsey. Yeah, that time uh, Hopkins are using their set play there, sending it around, and actually it did pinch, and they were still able to get the breakout. Glove save there will force the face off with 31 seconds left in the second period. Hamlet with a shot and a goal! How about that right off the face off? Been the key for the Hillers all night long. Tommy Hamblett with a beauty off of another tremendous Sean Walsh faceoff. Five nothing Hillers. Twenty nine seconds left to go in the second period. Yeah, those two end of the first period, end of the second period goals here, Tom. Those are just daggers. They certainly are. Walsh up against Gazzard. Horna looking for a shot here. We'll meet up with Simos. Rogers trying to sneak it away. Horna sticking with it, and Rogers lost a stick but was able to knock it away with his skate. Yeah, great play there, getting it out of the zone. Simos approaching five seconds left in the period. Maybe a Last shot opportunity here, and that is what a glove save by Thomas. Up. Yep, tremendous save off the stick of Gazzard. One second. Paul Thomas, he's just been sensational. And this period will end soon as this uh, puck is dropped for the faceoff, pretty much. And there it is. What a tremendous second period for the Hopkinton Hillers. They add not one, not two, not three, but four goals, and they lead it five to nothing as we head into the final 15 minutes of regulation. Eric, that was just tremendous. Unbelievable, even more impressive. You know, we're on our 11th straight period in a state tournament without giving up a goal. That's just unheard of. Hillers have outscored their opponents 19 to nothing throughout the postseason. It is unbelievable. And the final period coming up next. Can the Hillers hang on to the shutout? Can they hang on for the win? 
find out X. The Hillers lead Ashland five to nothing after two periods of play on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Welcome back to a packed house at Gallo Arena in Bourne. We are ready for the third period. The Hillers with all the momentum in their favor, leading Ashland 5 to nothing in this South Division Three sectional finals. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi on the call, John Ritz on camera. The winner of this game moves on to the state semifinals this Wednesday night at a time and location to be determined. Simos along the near side. Ashland has their work cut out for them in this third period if they want to get back into this game. Gazzard coming up the ice quick. There's a shot and it is flipped in the air and Thomas Damon left turn it away. He tried to catch it but he could not catch it, and then Boselli got in there. But another unbelievable save there by Thomas. Along the near side now. Here's Rogers. Rogers on the far side corner, stolen away by Hornung. Racing up Nick Fish. There's a shot, and Thomas wraps it up. A little knuckleball. Well, you got to expect Ashton to be ultra aggressive <laughs> in this third period. Yeah, they got to go for it now. You can't leave anything on the table here. And well, Hopkinton, like I said, they just want to uh, keep the composure, keep playing the way they've been playing. Hiller's net four goals in the second period. And they have just about everything going in their favor so far. Hornung looking for a shot. And that is going to end up around the boards. Gilbert tracks down. And it's stolen away. Here comes Milko. He was surrounded by Hillers there. Up along the near side. Trying to sneak it away his reap. And now it's going to be Hornung. And Hornung with a shot there. And then a back hitter turned away on a secondary attempt. And all Ashland here to start the period. Certainly is. Well, they know their season is at stake here. And that was a nice uh, defensive play earlier by Gilbert. A stoppage with 13.33 left. And we'll have a face off in the Ashland zone off the icing. Walsh up against Gazzard. It's, both, it's the uh, first sectional finals game for both of these teams. Both teams have had tremendous seasons. It's been a lot of fun to keep track of up along the far side. That's a good body contact there by Simos as Boselli was trying to break away. Now the Hillers maybe with an opportunity here as Hamlet is going to be cut off by Hornung. Hornung tried to wrap it around the near side boards, ended up off the official, which kind of helped out the Hillers, but Hornung able to get to it anyway. Hornung flips that one up, turned away by Thomas. Seamus tracks it down, puts it up behind the net. Well, I'd say in this third period, the Hillers just going to try to play a whole lot of keep away here with the 5 nothing lead. Yeah, they just want to make sure they're uh, playing smart in their end. They want to make sure there's no turnovers. Just get that puck out forwards. They want to stay down low to help out the defenseman to give them an outlet to get that puck out. It's one of those situations where the coach says, you get to that blue line, you just fire the puck in. Don't try to make a move. Give them a break going the other way. And just a reminder, stay tuned after the game is through. We'll have the trophy presentation. No matter what the result is, is that one's turned away, and then a secondary shot turned away by Thomas. Some more tremendous goaltending there, as Milko was able to get off a pretty good secondary shot. And now racing up the far side, Weinstock. And Weinstock was cut off by Hornung. Over to Milko. Milko leaves it for Irwin. And that one's taken away. Poked off the far side boards by Saparoshitz. And we get a... Late in the whistle, whistle there for there. the icing. Yeah. Certainly was. 12.28 left to go in the third period. The Hillers up five to nothing. Ashland will certainly have to put some scoring together 
They want to get back in this game. They don't have to do it very quickly. Rogers tripped up. And Mallet gets there. Mallet racing in. And ends up being wrapped around. There's a shot, and it's turned away by a defender. As Irwin had the break shot away. on it. Now a quick break here. Hamlet sets up Rogers. Now back to Hamlet and a goal! Hamlet and Rogers. Some great back and forth passing, and Hamlet finishes it off. This is a hat trick for Hamlet. It certainly is. He had two goals in the first period and has another one, or two goals in the second period, and now has another one here in the third period. A hat trick for Tommy Hamlet, the junior. A great assist by Kyle Rogers. Six nothing Hillers. Turned away by Thomas. Now along the near side. Flipped over towards Hamlet. And he'll have a whistle. Eleven fifty-two left to go in the third period. Hiller's up six to nothing. And the Ashland fans, despite their team trailing, they're sticking around. And they came uh, to the game today with a uh, Hawaiian theme going. And a whole lot of Hillers support as well. The Hillers fan section is absolutely packed. I don't think there's uh, any more space there. Here comes Rogers. Leaves it behind for Hamlet. Milko leaves it for Hornung. Hornung racing up. And Simos was trying to turn him away. An air goal there. It was Great save once again by Thomas. Over to Reap. Well, if Hornig's hurt or if he's just out of gas, but he's bent over. Well, hopefully he's okay. Ashland is going to switch up some of the talent on the ice. But the Hill isn't making him work there. He might just be exhausted. Because Rogers made a great block and Hornig had to chase him all the way back to his end. Hornig uh, had a good shot there. And he was really hoping for the goal in that situation where he had the breakaway. Along the near side corner. Hornung. Flip that oh. one in. And that is the first goal an opponent has scored in the postseason against the Hillers. 11.09 left and a beauty of a shot from the TVL MVP, Jackson Hornung. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Thomas never saw that one. His defenseman was in between him and Hornig, and by the time it got to him, it was by him before he saw it. A 6-1 to one game, and no goal, yeah. it looks like. What is the logic for this? Well, there's the goal. All right, it was a goal. Six to one, Hiller's leading. Up the far side by Merrill. Well, the Hiller's going to have to keep their foot on the gas here. The Ashland fans back into the game a little bit. Horna looking for another shot. Quinlan cuts him off. Over to Gazzard. Gazzard with a shot turned away by Thomas. And he'll squirt back to the Ashland zone. Fockers fans starting to get loud. But Ashland still has a lot of work to do before they're back in this game. Ten and a half minutes left to go. 6-1, Hiller's lead. Simos. And he was trying to leave it for Hamlet. Hamlet over to Rogers. And that one is kept away from Rogers. Out in front it goes. And now Simos with the backhanded pass to Rogers. Rogers with a nice move there. We get a whistle. Yeah. Played it with a high stick. And we'll have a face off in the Hiller zone. Well, it took one heck of a shot to finally have a goal on Cole Thomas in this postseason. Sean Walsh up against Brett Irwin. Took the TVL MVP to have a goal <laughs> against Cole Thomas in yeah, the postseason. Yeah, and he had needed a little late of the screen to get it through there too. 
But, but give him credit, he's been out there a lot of ice time for a senior, so. Oh, he certainly he, has. No quitting him. Just tremendous goaltending all postseason long. Seamus and Simos trying to work up the near side. Back out in front across to Seamus. Up to Hamlet. Hamlet will pop it around. To the near side corner it goes. Ashland trying to work back into Hiller's territory. Along the far side, that was Jack Reap with the knock up the ice. Seamus able to squirt it out towards Simos. Or Rogers, rather, who will pop it around the boards. Tracked down by Millett. And Gilbert will track it down. 9.20 and counting left to go in the third period. Ashland switching up some of the talent on the ice. A misfire there by Weinstock. Gilbert gets it back into Ashland territory. Pass cross over to Millett. Here comes Ashland. Looking for a shot here, it was turned away. And now that one squirted up and it, Cole Thomas with another great save. Thomas bobbled that one a little bit. <laughs> now the goalies practice sometimes when the ball's off the wall, so that's one of the reasons they do that. Up along the far side, Boselli. And here comes the clockers trying to work back into Hiller's territory. There's a shot turned away by Thomas. That's a good was, save. He's off the stick of Merrill. Another shot here, and that was deflected off a defender. And back to the Ashland zone we go. And Dempsey uh, just, just was able to turn that one away. Almost got through. Here comes Gazzard. Gazzard with a shot, and it's a little wide. Hornung with possession along the near side. Ashland just trying to dump in as many shots as they possibly can. And they need some scoring in a very big way. Rogers over to Hamlet. Blocked by the defense. Up along the near side and back to Hiller's territory it goes. That'll draw the whistle. We'll have a face off in the Ashland zone. 7.43 left to go in the third period. A 6-1 to one lead for the Hillers. The Clockers were finally able to find a way around Cole Thomas thanks to Jackson Hornung. Walsh up against Irwin. Pass over by Simos and a little wide there by Hamlet. Or Seamus rather at the blue line. Seamus. Hornung pops it around over to Milko. Milko breaking up the ice. And he'll wrap it around. Now well, Milko might have had a shot opportunity there if he raced up the ice a little bit. Over to Hamlet. Hamlet will cross, and I think we have an offsides here. Yep. 7-11 left to go in the third period as we get ready for a face-off on the far side of the neutral zone. Just a quick mention, Tommy Ashland has the uh, orange bows for uh, Jake Silver, who was a hockey player, too. Unfortunately, lost his battle of cancer. And both, both towns a big support for Jake. And it was certainly uh, great to see a lot of the TVL communities come together to support Jake. We'll have another offsides here, looks like. We'll have a face off on the far side. Hornung with a potential breakaway here. Hornung leaves it over to Merrill. Gilder with a bit of a push on Merrill there. Racing back towards Ashland territory. Now here comes Quinlan and offsides. Well, <clears throat> after entering action here for two nonstop periods, a little bit of a Lull, shall we say. Yep. Well, I think at <laughs> this point, the Hillers just playing keep away, really. I mean, 
They're certainly not being as aggressive as they were at getting shots off. They're just trying to burn that timer down. Yep, they should be just playing smart hockey like they are. And they're playing very well defensively and not letting Ashland get too many shots as well. Here comes Gazzard. That one quickly turned away. Up along the near side corner, Simos gets the stick on it. And Rogers knocks it to the neutral zone. Poked off the boards by Mallet. Just past the reach of Sheamus. Now we'll get to it. Mallet tracks it down in the clockers. Defensive side and back and forth to the neutral zone now. Saparoshitz flips it up. Walsh into the corner. There's a shot just a little wide there. Gazzard with the pass up over to Hornung. Less than six minutes left to go in the third period. Hornung over to the near side corner. And he got tied up with Gilbert. Here comes the Hillers. Saparoshitz met up with Millet. Pops it off the board. Saparoshitz wide to the right. Horna slaps it up towards Gilbert. And Boselli there with the steal. Boselli, nice move, but no one there to pick him up. Good check by Kirk, another good defensive play. Jammed up along the far side boards. Merrill thought he had a break, but Gilbert denies him. Tracking it down along the corner. That was Dan Kirk got a little tripped up. Ice is slippery out there today, <laughs> I are. Yeah, I think the, the refs are letting a little bit go at this point that they normally would call based off the score. Pass to reach of Quinlan, Kirk. Hornung. There goes Hornung. And he's tripped up. And a secondary shot by Milko turned away by Thomas. Another tremendous save. A pass over to the top of the circle. That shot is denied. Was off the stick of Nick Sabati. And we get a stoppage here. Your attention, please. And we'll have a face off in the Hillers zone. 423 left to go in regulation. The Hillers up six to one, minutes away from earning a trip to the state semifinals. And there's a goal for Ashlyn. It was Nick Sabati with the initial shot and Alex Amalfi off the deflection. Yeah, no chance for Thomas Ayers. It was a good tip. A six to two Hillers lead. Well, the game's not over yet. <laughs> Walsh up against the Malfi. Poked up over towards Walsh, and he's turned away by Irwin. Glyden tracks down. Up the near side. Hamlet wraps it around. Less than four minutes left to go in the third period. A four goal lead for the Hillers. Stay tuned. After this game is through, we'll have the trophy presentation. But just to recap the goals in this game for the Hillers, there was one in the first period, Steve Simos with a beauty of a goal. And then in the second period, you had one less than a minute in by Tommy Hamblett. And then at 11.55, Steve Simos once again. And then less than a minute later, you had Kyle Rogers. And then with 29 seconds left in the period, Tommy Hamblett. And then in this third period, 12.08 left, Tommy Hamblett struck again. And that was his third goal of the game. As Tommy Hamblett earned the hat trick tonight. And then in the last couple minutes, you had Ashland with a pair of goals to make it 6-2. to two. Simos over to Kirk. And now up behind the net, Quinlan. Out in front, and now it's taken by Ashland. Good defense there by Boselli, and now Merrill is going to meet up along the far side with Sheamus. Approaching three minutes left to go in the third period. 
The Hillers trying to close out this game and earn their first ever Division III South sectional title. And that shot wide to the left by Kirk. Nick Fish puts that one off of Thomas. Weinstock. And it's flipped up in the air there by Oselli. Now here comes the Hillers. Yep, smart play there, just get the puck in deep. Yep. For the him. offense go to work. Rogers jammed up along the near side with Merrill. Now a couple more clockers join the party. Smart play there by Rogers. He knew there was a change. He was all alone. Gilbert out in front of the net. Rogers was trying to poke it in. Walsh turns it. And it just wide to the right he goes. Saparoshitz. Pass over to the near side. Walsh. And he's denied by Dempsey. And now it's taken away by Horning. Good block there by Horning. Horning with a quick break up the near side and out to the slot. He goes backhander and Thomas turns it away. Less than two minutes left to go now and we have a whistle high sticking. Your attention please. At the conclusion the Hillers will switch things up. Well, despite these two teams being tough physical teams, uh, it's been a relatively clean game, Eric. Yeah, it has. Yeah, just the one uh, you know, minor tripping penalty. Other than that, all good body checks. Face off in the Hiller zone. Quinlan. Hornung fires one wide to the right. Gilbert gets to it. Well, hats off to the Ashland Clockers on a tremendous season. And uh, get to this point, it is always a very tough thing to do. And the, the South brackets are certainly the toughest sectional bracket you could be in, as they have the most competition out of any of the other brackets. 21 teams this year in the South bracket. Certainly not easy to get to this point. But the Hopkins and Hillers, they're going to come out victorious today as they just dominated in the second period and gave themselves a five to nothing lead heading into the third with four second period goals. A tremendous all around performance all postseason long by the Hillers. And boy, what an accomplishment for this Hillers hockey program. Less than a minute left to go. Back to the Ashland zone and it'll be turned away by Dempsey and then he'll pick it up as Rogers was closing in. Yeah, the program's come a long way. I remember when the, <clears throat> when the program first started, I was assistant coach, and I think we had uh, one win in the first two seasons. <laughs> but uh, these coaches have got these kids playing at the top level right now. They certainly do. Hats off to Scott O'Connor and Chris McPherson. Just what a job they have done with this, with this year's team, but this program as a whole. Just a constant threat every year, and last year, both of these teams lost in the sectional semifinals in this very same bracket. So it's good to see them both reach this point this year, but especially good to see the Hillers come out victorious and move on to the state tournament. 28 seconds left. Some great defense by Reese Griffiths along the far side earlier. Although, ironically, that one win in the first two years was against Ashlands. <laughs> <laughs> Horna turned away. Walsh gets to it. Walsh just going to skate it out. Less than 10 seconds left to go. And that is just about going to do it. There it is. The final buzzer. And your Hopkinton Hillers are the South Division III champions. And they are moving on to the state semifinals next Wednesday night. The Hillers take down Ashland 6-2 and improved to 16 wins, six losses, two ties overall. What a job by the Hillers throughout this season and throughout this postseason. They outscored their opponents by a total of 20 to two. That is just absolutely remarkable. Yeah, tremendous job. You know, it, as we said earlier, Tom, just everybody picked it up from uh, the goaltending to the defense to the offense. Just what a way to have a, a streak end, or not end, had to have this, uh, the way the season end come down here, the, the sectional championship first in the school history. And hats off to the clockers on a 
tremendous season as well. They certainly worked hard to get to this point. And they have a lot of great players coming back next year, so they'll be a force to be reckoned with for a long time. But just absolutely tremendous by the Hopkinton Hillers at John Gallo Arena here today. And of course, you're going to want to stay tuned. We'll have the trophy presentation. And when you're talking about who could potentially be the Hillers MVP of this postseason, there's just so many contributors. It's tough to pick just one, I yeah. think, Eric. Yeah, there is. There is. You know, uh, Thomas with his play in net, the uh, the offense, you know, Simos, Hamlet, Walsh, just, he said that'd be a tough one to pick. I wouldn't want to make that choice. And I certainly wouldn't either. But it, it was really a team effort to get to this game and take the victory in this and advance on to the state. You don't do this without a whole lot of talent on your roster, especially in this south bracket. Yeah, and they have two TVL teams there at the end, too, just that shows how tough a league that they uh, play in during the regular season. And I think as a whole, the TVL just continues to get tougher and tougher in every sport. They just always seem to have teams around at the very end of the postseason. Ladies and gentlemen, And now we'll go to ice level for the trophy presentation. Trophy presentation, ladies and gentlemen, the Hopkinton Hillers, your 2018-2019 South Division III sectional champions. They are moving on to the state semifinals Wednesday night versus an opponent and at a location and time to be determined, but a tremendous accomplishment by the Hopkinton Hillers. Eric, any uh, final thoughts as we wrap up today's broadcast? Uh, just, you know, watching this team play, it just, they have really come together. Uh, you know, sort of like watching the Patriots during the year. They have, uh, you know, their ups and downs, but when it comes time, crunch time, uh, they just put it all together. And, you know, coming down to the finals, there's no reason they can't win that if they continue to play the way they played through this whole tournament. And that is certainly a great comparison as the Hillers did have their ups and downs, but they have put it all together, and they are white hot right now, deep into the postseason, moving on to the state semifinals.
The Hopkins and Hillers defeat the Ashland Clockers by a final score of 6-2. to two. That'll wrap up our coverage for this Sunday afternoon from John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner, Eric Carty, I'm Tom Nappy, and as always, we thank you for watching Hopkins and Hillers Boys City Hockey on HCAM. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.